Let gratitude rise, my God, as an incense, savoir, fragrance before the throne room. classic thank you house of Judah Genesis 12 1 to 3 amplify classic let's be together as a family at the count of three multimedia <clears throat> excuse me now in Haran the Lord said to Abraham go for yourself for your own and away from your country from your relatives and your father's house to the land that I will show you, I want to hear you, and I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you with abundant increase of favors. Amen. And make your name famous and distinguished. Amen. And you will be a blessing. Dispensing good to others. And I will bless those who bless you, who confer prosperity or happiness upon you. And curse him who curses or uses insolent language toward you. In you will all the families and kindred of the earth be blessed. And by you they will bless themselves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the assignment this morning, I'm serving my way to greatness, part number four. And for a subtitle, blessed to be a blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the awesome privilege to gather again under this amazing open heavens. We gather as a people who are grateful, who have come back to say thank you like the one leper. I beseech you again to take a coal of fire from the altar of heaven and on the lips, the tongues of clear of the seven sun that I will come to your people with a word from the throne of grace. Help me to go beyond my study, contemplation, my frailties and speak expressly Thus saith the Lord. Move every man, boy, God, in this room. And the multitudes across the nations, from where we are, to the place called destiny. We're about to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' wondrous name we pray. Let somebody shout a big amen. amen. Reach out to three, four, tell them, I'm glad you came. 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 Glad you came. And you may be sitting in God's wonderful presence. I'm glad you came. Hallelujah. We began a Holy Ghost party for those who came early at 7.30. For you all late come as the Lord bless you and forgive you. Praise God. The party begins 7.30 a.m. every Sunday morning. Hallelujah. We have been looking in the past few weeks on this subject matter both of greatness and kingdom service. I believe a great number of us have come to understand in better regard what greatness is at least from the kingdom of God perspective and what kingdom service is all about. One of our ten core values is Christ-like leadership amongst the ten and in this month of August we're trying to center around our discourse, our teachings to build on that pillar stone or that pillar amongst the ten that God gave us many many years ago. You will remember the leadership of Jesus is simply 
the servant leadership this clearly is different from what is customary or what is popular in our world system as we've seen that in the world for you to be great uh, it requires you being somewhat tyrannical arrogant prideful proud push people around See, that, that's a big man it's a big man it's a big man <laughs> but in the kingdom of god the way up is down the way to greatness as far as the bible tells us a servitude or servanthood and we see jesus give us an example of himself in matthew 20 28 it says even as the son of man came not to be ministered unto but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many he came to give his life as a ransom as a servant to many we see again his model is exemplified in our anchor text for this month of august philippians 2 8 and 9 says but jesus made himself of no reputation and he took upon him the form of a servant the key word there is a servant jesus took upon him voluntarily the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient. I hope you're obedient. I'm obedient. Heavenly vision. If you're willing and obedient, you eat of the good. You better be obedient. Otherwise, I'll check you out. It became obedient. You better be obedient. Became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Saints, if we claim to be Christians, followers of Christ, we ought to become imitators of Christ his character, his nature, and his person. Again, I emphasize that in the kingdom of God, the only way to go to the top is to stoop low, to go down. That's the only way to the top. So if you want greatness, as far as God is concerned, you want to rise there. The way there is down. That's just the way. <laughs> uh, we see that humility is a major requirement for those who will be lifted by God. Excuse me. James 4, 6 says, But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud. Oh boy, may God not resist any one of us. <laughs> one who should help me, resist me, I'm in trouble. But he gives grace unto the humble. So the one who is humble is rightly poised or positioned to receive the grace and the mercy of the Lord. James 4, 10 says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. And he shall lift you up. So humility guarantees a lifting and a promotion. We learned many weeks ago how God promotes largely is through those who humble themselves to serve others. We see Apostle Peter reflect this same truth, this same principle of humility qualifying for the Lord's exaltation and lifting. In 1 Peter 5, verse 5 to 6, please write down write down likewise you younger submit yourselves unto the elder yea all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility for God resisted the proud that's it again hmm? and he giveth grace to the humble humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God oh boy that he may exalt you when that I will exalt myself above the stars of God. That's when your falling starts. Hello, somebody. So whenever the Lord sees pride in any of us, <laughs> it must remind him of, of Satan. So we must fight pride. And we all struggle in one way or the other. There are elements of pride. In fact, the worst kind of pride is what I call humility. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, it simply means you have a show of humility, but inwardly you're proud. You know, there is a, uh, <laughs> help me Lord, there is a tribe in Nigeria, uh, help me Lord, you know I'm a Nigerian, right? Born in the east, married a wonderful lady from Moshebo, born again in the North Zaria, pastored here. I'm, I'm a Nigerian, I'm, I'm a Nigerian, but it's a tribe in Nigeria. Uh, but you know, typically their greeting is such that they're always, sir, ekwele sir, I give myself away. Now, now, I really I believe it's a culture of respect but I also do know that all of that is not humility sometimes it's pride in disguise you know what I'm saying 
So, so the, you see, the worst kind of pride is those who masquerade their pride with humility, but really it's pride. You know, when somebody commends you, ah, no, me, ah, me, ah, I'm like a worm. That's pride. I know, Papa, I know, me, you know, you're, you're saying it, but really you're, you're being prideful because you're enjoying that. You're, you're, are you here? Let me leave you alone. Let's go to my phone. <laughs> Give me three fire baptized hallelujahs. Come on, church. Come on, Roger. Oh, come on. Clap your hands, all you saints. I said clap. I said clap. Can you add a shout to it? In the nations, the shout inside is the winning side. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I realize the AC is getting too cold. I got to wake you up. I know my job. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. See, see this. The Bible says in Colossians 3, 22, just to buttress my, my, my earlier fact or point. Colossians 3, 2, 2. Servants obey in all. Shut the door. It's about you and Jesus. Huh? And you are God that sees you in secret. Will we reward you openly. Oh, can I, can I prophesy? There's some people under the sound of my voice. For the past few months and years, your labor in this house has been very secretive. You're doing things oh, shall I, Baba, for the Lord behind the scene that nobody knows about. Look at that. Let me decree and declare to you your show time is around the corner. May the God who alone lifts and retains you in your lifted position, may He lift you from the back to the front side, may He lift you from the bottom to the top. Your reward shall not be secret, your reward shall be public for all to see. Shout yes, yes, yes. You know, you want some believers that all of a sudden, somehow, as we say in Nigeria, they hammer. Uh, you know what hammer? <laughs> they blow. And you wonder, what has he done? What has she done? Hey, but you don't understand the secret labors. Oh my God, I'm talking to somebody here. The secret tears of that brother. So what you see seems to happen over. He says it's an overnight success. Good heart is an overnight. Over what? Thirty plus years. Over what? There's compounded interest of tears and pain and labor, rejection, refusal. Overnight, overnight. The logic, logic. Overnight, you must be joking. Listen, some of you have been laboring. You haven't seen the reward. I came to serve as a midwife to tell you your baby is about to burst somebody's water is about to break if that you shout hey he will not forget your labor of love your tithing your giving your praying your fasting your evangelizing H.O.J. Days of rehearsal. Nobody knows. They see you stand and sing. They get blessed. Ooh, they're anointed. Yes, it takes rehearsal on Tuesday. It takes rehearsal on Saturday. Some days in between. Why? There is a price to pay for power. You see somebody anointed. It looks easy. It ain't cheap. It may be free from God. But somebody paid the price. Apostle Paul said that I am what I am by the grace of God. Listen, but he said, but I, nonetheless, I labor more than they. There is a labor of grace. There is a labor in grace. What am I saying? Somebody, your reward is around the corner. Oh, when God helps you to blow. <laughs> no be a... Uh, uh, internet blow. No, no, no. Divine blow. He lifts and he retains in the little position. Shout a big amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Saints, before I go on this morning to my focus, I want to really charge 
encourage us, including myself, to go beyond hearing these wonderful messages. I've been blessed in August, honestly. Just the, the study time, the teaching, the preaching, I get blessed. I go back sometimes to YouTube to play back because oftentimes it's not me, the Holy Ghost speaking through me. So I'll be unwise not to know that. Praise God. You know, so, so please, let's go beyond just hearing, oh, another nice sermon. Papa will preach again next Sunday. No, 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 it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not an autopilot. Listen, we're called to be doers of the word of the Lord. And the only way you and I can do God's word is to incline our ears to hear the word over and over again. Romans 10, 17, faith comes only one way, by hearing and hearing and hearing God's word. Don't say I've heard. No, hearing and hearing. Go online. It's available free of charge. On my Facebook, Apostle Gura, I'm on my YouTube, Apostle Gura TV, loads of messages, edited, books are there, free of charge. Download if you want to, share if you want to. If you want to get a copy, buy one outside. What is there? This material like everywhere, we have no excuse. In the day of ignorance, he winked at, but this is not a day of ignorance anymore. We've been taught properly. You've been taught about service, service and servitude. It, it will be shameful, I'm sorry to use that word, if after you've learned these things, you're not involved in active service in your local assembly. You sit like a sack. You want to be served. That's all one month members or one month attendees. Two months, three months. But after six months, five months, no, it's error. Go through a membership class if you're really a member of this church. Why? There are certain blessings that are exclusive to those who have caught covenant. They're fair weather believers. No, 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 no. You get crumbs, you get freebies. You think you're blessed? No, sir. Caught covenant. You're saying, sink or swim, this is my church family. Get into a service team. There are many. From music, instrumentation, a choir, uh, 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 Rajik ambassadors, a parking lot attendants, many. Youth church, Judas church, many. Something must interest you to serve. Use your time, use your talent, use your treasures to serve God. You're too blessed not to serve God. How do you get up from your bedroom? You have a shower, wear your nice Sunday, Sunday dress, come to church, sit down, get blessed, soak it all in. Hello, guys, bye. You enjoy what I'm doing, what they're doing. You don't serve. It's okay for a while. After a while, get your legs and your hand. And get, even if it's just prayer, you do. You join the prayer service for service team. Say, service team, do something. To show that you, you're glad to be alive. You know why? You're alive, you're occupying space. Justify it by serving God. Otherwise, you may be gone somewhere else. I'm, I'm preaching hard. I need to. I need to. You need it. I came to where I am by seven. Born again, 16, gone to 17. That's my brother there. We were in the same school, same month. Abuse era. He knows me from then, then, then. Serve like a dog, as it were, we joyfully, gladly. But guess what? It pays well to serve God. How do you feel? Just, just balance like CEO, CEO. I mean, I like your balancing, but serve. You've been taught well. You can't go through my next class. You're a big man. Be a big man. Enjoy the freebies. Just what you enjoy is freebies. Oh, there those who are in the inner co -co 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 -co. what they enjoy, you can't enjoy it. No price, no, no price, no game. They're telling the gym. I partially agree. What you don't sow, you can't reap. Hmm? You want to reap where I'm not sown? It came universal principles. It's not, even, it's not even Christian principle. It's a universal law. Genesis 8 22. As long as the earth is seed time, harvest, summer, winter, seed time and harvest, as long as this world is what a man sows, he will reap. <laughs> Except you don't believe it's your church. But I know most of you believe. The way you come and jump and say, hey, oh, papa, papa. Pa. Then in, involve. Get involved. So I'm too old. You're not too old to serve. You've been married for too long. No, 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 no. You're not too old to serve. Do you outgrow eating? Do you outgrow breathing? <laughs> Even Jesus came to serve me and you, and they will not balance. They just, just serve me. I'll be serving you, but they're rewards for serving you. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory to God. We must grow up. He told me months ago, it's time to turn the congregation to an army. An army is discipline. Army has order. Army, they know their ranks. Jewel too. They don't break ranks. They run to and fro. Fall upon swords. Can't kill them. They don't break ranks. The Lord is with an army here. <laughs> We're not doing church because we didn't know what to do. Just, just, do, just do church and make money and eat food. For what? To eat food? That's what I'm doing? That's what you're doing? No, sir. Be 
It's a mandate. It's a son of Rabba. It's designed by God to reach the end of the earth. <laughs> From this place. See, what's he saying? I'm telling you what I know. From this place, a sound is going from the nation we here. Why? To prepare people for the coming glory. It's not your church. Just see, just, 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 just build house. B building is not our job. That's why the building project is not, is not, is not announced here. It's not, you're not harassed. Building, no, the building is going on its own accord. It's, 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 it's an offshoot. It's, it's a means to an end. The end is souls. The end is revival. The end to bind here is revival. Not so can you have abuse. No, 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 no. Please, I beg you in the name of Yahushua how much you are. Serve. You have no excuse after these teachings. Humble yourself. Go through membership class. Go through, go through, go through, go through. Let young people teach you. Humble yourself. Go through it. Go through it. Go through it. It's humility. Otherwise, you miss something in your future you have not prepared for. If you if you go up, you don't grow up, you blow up. Write it down. If you go up without growing up, growth is a process. Growth is painful. Line upon line, growth. Some were seven, they're not left in the service. I can see them all. They are run up and down. I know some of you. I know some of you. Some of my son, I know. You use pandemic as an excuse. Pandemic is over. There's no pandemic back. Big man like you. May, I, may fire catch you where you are. May no man get there, get there. May God not give you something you cannot handle. Your hands are working, your legs are working. You can't serve him. Hmm. Hmm. Pastor be coming down. Pastor Jing Wayo be coming down. Mommy be coming down. Give me three fire baptized. Hallelujah. Come on, chat. Come on, chat. Clap your hands. Oh, you saints, shout with a voice of triumph. Ah. We've learned a few things by way of summary. Number one, we've learned what true greatness is. We've learned what kingdom service is. <laughs> we've learned what practical ways of, to engage in kingdom service. We've learned the very words of kingdom service. But let me try to summarize. The three categories, please write down now. Get into my meat of my matter in just 19 minutes. The three major, major categories of kingdom service, please write. Number one, physical. Number two, spiritual. Number three, financial stewardship. Physical, spiritual, financial. What do I mean by physical? I just spoke about that. Your engagement, such as involvement in your local assembly. Your strength is involved. Your time is involved. You are part of what drives the church. You are part of the inner working. You have a part to contribute. Physical. You are involved. They call workers meeting. You show up. You are a worker. Joyfully so. Young, old, middle age. You serve till old age. So physical. Spiritual. Things like prayer, fasting, kingdom expanding prayers. Matthew 33, 6, first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And all this is going to follow you. Now as you do that, it's part of your kingdom service. Anna the prophetess prayed for many years. Waiting for the coming Messiah. And it was said she served God with fasting and in prayer. So you serve God with these spiritual engagements like prayer, fasting. But the third aspect is financial stewardship. Speaks of you using your resource, your money, to serve the law, to send your money on a mission. And all three are very important, by the way. All three are important the physical, the spiritual, the financial. We've dealt reasonably with us two, us two, physical, spiritual. In the brevity of the time I have, I want us to deal with, this, with the financial stewardship. Again, our text I read to your hearing. Genesis 12, 2 to 3, Amplified Classic. To refresh your memory. And I will make of you a great nation. God's word to Abraham. Or better still, Abraham. Before he became Abraham. 
And I will bless you with abundant increase of favors. And make your name famous and distinguished. And you will be a blessing. Hear this. That's a punchline. Dispensing good to others. Say with me. Dispensing. I didn't hear you. Dispensing good to others. One more time. Dispensing good to others. Right. And I will bless those who bless you. Who confer prosperity or happiness upon you. And curse him who curses or uses insolent language toward you. In you will all the families and kindred of the earth be blessed. And by you they will bless themselves. Hmm. Verse 2 says I will bless you and then you will be a blessing. And it gives us an idea of what it means to be a blessing. Ah, yeah, yeah. It says dispensing good to others to others to others so we're going to see that the very purpose why god blesses a man is not just for the sake of blessing you per se oh yeah yeah he blesses you to make you a blessing oh boy you know i i wonder why it is god chose joseph amongst the 12 sons to be the one that would become the vice regent in egypt next to pharaoh he's not the oldest neither is he the youngest but somehow my 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 personal um persuasion and i stand to be corrected is that god knew oh boy there was something about joseph that when he will bless joseph ultimately joseph will not have any bitterness against his brethren and joseph will be generous enough to dispense good to the other brothers because he will understand that God lifted him up so that he can in turn be a blessing to the rest of the brethren. Am I talking here now? You know, imagine if, if God raised Levi or Simeon to that place of being a vice regent or, or next to the, the king over, over Egypt. Hallelujah. If he did that, perhaps Levi or Simeon will not have the kind of heart texture or content or character to be generous and liberal to the rest of the brethren so god really blesses you not you no sir no ma he blesses you primarily to make you a blessing ah, yeah, yeah. so that if you are blessed listen carefully don't miss the point now if you are blessed and you refuse to serve as a conduit pipe uh, yeah, 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 yeah. To be a blessing to somebody else. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? The water will run dry. I can do my Have you seen pipes that are designed by the manufacturer to carry water? Water board, no water. Right. The design of God is to bless you and in turn to make you a blessing. You see. You see, that is the purpose of the blessing. And if we miss the purpose of the blessing, as we know, the meaning of purpose, purpose, number one, is the original intention of the creator or the manufacturer. It's been said, when purpose is not known, when purpose is not pursued, listen carefully, abuse is inevitable. Abuse is a compendium of two words, abnormal usage. So, if this microphone is made by Sure Company for amplifying my voice, and I decide, wait a minute, I can use this to eat my spaghetti as my latest chopstick. Uh, come on, mama, mama, and I begin to eat, uh, you know what I'm saying? That is abuse use of this product am i correct am i correct am i correct it's an abuse to be blessed and not to allow yourself to be a channel of blessing to others somebody said i am blessed to be a blessing to others in the name of jesus hallelujah god's blessing handmaid of the lord good to see you welcome there blessed to be a blessing saints the issue with money and finances is very, very, um, let me choose my word. I won't say sensitive. I won't say delicate. But I'll tell you what I'll say to you. A man of God humorously said, say humorously said. He said, <laughs> in a church service, two things can make the congregation harsh. One 
is the move of the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost moves, perhaps there'll be a holy hush. But he said, one thing also can make the congregation hush when the preacher begins to talk about money. Hush. You see the hush? I can hear the hush already. It's so loud, it's deafening. It just went hush. I said, money. Hey, 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 don't go there. Don't go there. Hey, hey, go. No, don't go there. You know why? Because money is the closest contender for the place of Messiah in the heart of every human being. Oh yes, oh yes. It's Matthew 6 says, you cannot serve God at the same time. You'll either love one and hate the other or vice versa. But guess what? We can serve with money. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? Did you hear me? We can serve God with money. I say, man, you'll serve God with money. Oh, shaka, but when you fail to serve God with money, that money may take the place of God in your heart. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. I, I, I pray you're being held. You see, God wants you and I to grow to the place of spiritual maturity. Where we're loving so much and we understand, beloved, that we are not the owner of anything that we think we own. The Bible declares in Job 121, naked I came, naked I will depart. Listen carefully. The shirt upon your back you think is your own, ain't your own. The car that you drove or drove you, you think is your own, ain't your own. That house you live in, the sea of all, you think is your own. Really, in the eyes of God, we're going to talk about money. It's important. Mm. As long as you're on this part of eternity, you will need money. You will. Can't pretend about it. And by the way, let me put out a, a disclaimer. I'm not a get quick rich prosperity preacher. Those of you who have passed five years, you know, it's not my, not my turf. I'm not into gambling. No, no, no. But Jesus, listen, spoke more about financial stewardship. Listen carefully. This will blow your mind. More than faith. More than hell. More than heaven. Huh? Did you hear me? Research it. A chunk of thought have to do with financial stewardship. Mm -hmm. So it's important. Why? It's the greatest contender for the place of God in human heart. And where God wants money to be, listen carefully, is under your feet. Under your feet. And I cannot believe that part of why the first century church sold their land and they brought it to the house of the Lord. Guess where they put the money? Where? The hands of the apostles? No, sir. Where? At the feet of the apostle. Luke 10. To tread upon serpent and scorpions and over every power of the enemy and nothing, nothing shall buy any. Where money belongs is where? You see, dominion, wheresoever the soles of your feet shall tread, I give unto you what? As an inheritance. That means you're bringing money to a place of dominion. It doesn't rule you anymore. <laughs> you know, as long as you are joyful because your account is full, you know, men, you know what I'm saying? Man, we have a lot of responsibility. You know, when the account oh, this is this is this is this is pride to this is the way we walk. <laughs> you can call the shots. But the truth be told is God wants you, and I'm not talking about happiness, to be as joyful. <laughs> Whether the account is full or empty. Why? You've grown in your confidence that your trust is not in the resource. Your trust is in the source. Oh, come on, come on, come on. I am preaching myself happy. Everything around you is only a resource. Your job is a resource. Your friend who helped you is a resource. Daddy Rich is a resource. Why doing good? Listen, listen. The one true source is what? God. He's called the El Shaddai. The resource may change, but may your source never change. Hallelujah. The Bible tells me in Proverbs 3 verse 5, trust the Lord with what? 
with all, not some, with all of your heart. Guess what? Lean not to your own understanding. Verse 6, acknowledge the law in all of your ways. He will direct a path. Your trust must be in the source. <laughs> when you trust the source and things are shaking the natural, go back to the source. He will send another resource. When the brook is drying up, it's only one resource. Go back to the source. He's sending you where? To the widow of Zarephath where he will feed you. May you trust your source more than your resource. Hallelujah. God is our source. So you drink on your salary, not based on your bank. He said, are you reckless? No, I'm not reckless. I'm a chartered accountant. I trained about money and figures. But listen, there is a place that natural, natural laws are suspended by supernatural laws. How can you explain that a man, Jesus, will take five loaves and two fish. He will break, he will distribute, and he will feed thousands. And you say, that's, that's not natural. That's supernatural law. Understand to beckon of the earth extra on your ordinary to give you extra ordinary results God is our source look at Nigeria we can't live based on the economy the brook is drying but guess what the brook Jesus never dries ha. my Bible tells me he is the same Makatebola. yesterday he is the same today he is the same forevermore he never dries he's called the El Shaddai the most high God may he be our source when men are your source and they leave you, life falls like a pack of cars. But guess what? Go to your source. Don't let any man be your God. They gave you food, gave you clothes, gave you house. Thank them. Be grateful. It's good manners. But listen, they are not your source. God is let God be true, every man a liar. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm blessed to be a blessing. You are blessed to be. A blessing. Mm. Mm. Oh, let me make a few statements. If God can bring it through you, say with me, through me. All right. He'll bring it to you. You know, I'm, I'm really excited when a number of uh, family members approach me as a man of God. This is really what I'm I trust the Lord to do when the Lord opens these doors. I get excited. I join my faith with the faith. You know why? Even before the so-called breakthrough comes, they've committed to the Lord. Not to buy a new house or car. Not that it's bad. But they say, this is my own covenant with God. As God brings it through me, he'll bring it to me. I know God will ultimately bring it through that person and to the person. The seven of you in this house who say, man of God, I see the multiple needs in the ministry like this. Growing ministry. Going to the missions, the nations. Makodi, birthed. Overy, birth, About to be birthed. Potakot, about to be birthed. Conference in, in, in Makodi, three days, next two weeks. Gathering is around the corner, October 1. GP anniversary, two, uh, two days, next, this week. You're saying, Lord, if you can bring it, through me, surely you can bring it to me. Mm. 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 Is that your heart desire? Whisper a prayer to the Father right now. If you can bring it through me, be assured it's fine to bring it to me. It will get to where it's meant to get to. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Saints, the foundation for this lifestyle of being a blessing to others is to understand that you and I are primarily stewards of everything. Of the talent, treasure, time. You don't own anything. I don't own anything. I will give account how we use all God gave us. Bible of the talents. Matthew 25. The Bible says in Acts 20, 35. I have showed you all things. What's of Apostle Paul? How that so laboring, you ought to support the weak. And to remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he said... It is more blessed. Look at this. Please don't miss the point. It is more blessed to do what? Is that in your Bible? Church, to what? To give than to receive. That's not how most people think. We say it's more blessed for me to receive. We love to receive. 
Oh, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I want to say we are received. But the Bible says it's, now that is a blessing. But it says it's more. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see, what you receive cannot multiply. It's a harvest, quote unquote, for my illustration's sake. Yeah. What you give will multiply. Wow. So it's a blessing to receive. I love to receive. I'm not against it. So don't say it doesn't. I, 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 I love gifts. I love gifts. I'm content, but I love gifts. Yeah. But you see, it's more blessed to give. And a good number of the gifts, by the way, God has blessed me with. He's at the same time said, I want it. Like Isaac, I want it. You know, I said, God, this my no, 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 no. Don't wrestle with God. He gave you. He wants it back. Give it. No, but it's a, it's a, it's a, oh, help me, Lord. You see, when you receive and God asks you to sow it, listen, it's a twice sown seed. Oh, man. I don't, I wish I had time. Your seeds may leave your hand, but doesn't leave your life. Huh? It goes into your future to do what? To pay the way. So when you do receive, you are blessed, but it's more blessed Hi. to give than to receive. Why? The, the word blessed means empowered to prosper. That's the point. So it's when you release, you become empowered to prosper. You receive is fine, but listen, God is looking for the givers. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. Can I suggest to you and to me today that we make our lives a seed? When you make your life a seed, material things begin to matter to you less. Oh boy. Can I be vulnerable to you? Let me be. As your pastor. There are certain things that I, I have received that I feel uncomfortable to keep them. Because I sense, I'm being vulnerable, that they have the potential, that's me, to become an idol in my heart. I know you're super spiritual. That's me. And because I know that potential exists, I know how the kingdom operates. What you give can never master you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What you give has become subservient to you. <laughs> if you have a Rolex watch and it's your only Rolex watch and God knocks on your door and said, give me your Rolex. Give it to Apostle Obi Paksari. Give it to Pastor Danison. Give it to Pastor Ame. And then you look at the Rolex watch. But, but God, this is my only one Rolex. Ah, a mini. Ah, is my turn. Let me look. Ah, is my turn. But God said, give it away. You see, if you kept that Rolex watch, you don't know it. It will begin to fester. It will begin to. This, we don't, I, this is how it works. It will creep to your heart. Eh? It becomes Lord. So you don't know your sleeping Rolex. You're walking a mini I have Rolex. Now, I'm not as spiritual as most of you are, but this is me. I'm being vulnerable. But the things that he gives me, I know that, hey, it's for the using. But I tell him, I am sitting down on this car with one, forgive my language, with one bum bum. So that whenever the owner asks for it, by God's grace, because I have not easily. Am I helping you? Beware of my mom. <laughs> you want to be rich? <laughs> be wary of wanting to be rich. I want to be rich. Read Paul's writing to Timothy. For those who want to be rich. They are faced with all kinds. Temptations. It's not bad. But grow spiritually to the point where it's, to you, is nonsense. But if not nonsense, quote unquote, then you're not, you're, 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 you may be risking your soul. Poor poverty. 
yet they gave liberally with joy. What's the point? The principle is this. When you give God your heart, your hand is easy to submit. That I, make sense? Oh, come on, come on, come on. So my son, give me your heart. When your heart is given to him, it's easy to lay down and to release. All right. One fundamental principle of, 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 of stewardship is found several in the scriptures, but I'll just read two or three. I quoted Genesis 8.22 earlier. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be given unto you good measure. This is how God gives. Press down, shake it together, run it over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Saints, if we understand these principles, listen, our lives would just keep on flourishing and blossoming from one level to the next. You can, can trust us with much more. You just can trust you. Galatians 6 verse 7, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he reap also. Hallelujah. We want to be careful and cautious that our motivation for giving is not to receive. Our motive is because we love him because he first loved us. John 3.16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So the motivation is because we love him. The byproduct is we receive. We are blessed again by our seeds. As we think of giving, I summarize giving in two broad categories. Number one, your tithe. Your tithe. Your tithe. Number two, your offerings. Malachi 3. God said, it is in both things you've robbed me. So they're different. Your tithe. Your, what's your tithe? 10% of your income, your salary. 10% of, of your profit, of your business. 10%. It's not that it's all he's asking for. It's where it begins from. And you can knock down tithe all you want to knock it down. It predicts the law. It's entrenched in the law. Jesus, by scriptures, affirm tithe. Hallelujah. So knock it down. All you want to knock. That's fine. Uh, but you see, there's tithe and offering. Your offering is what you give on top of the tithe. An offering is a wide spectrum. Kingdom investment. All you do to see that the kingdom of God is expanded. Given to the poor. So he that gives to the poor lends to the Lord. Given to ministers, preachers. So it's, it's a way of honoring, honoring God by honoring his servant. So there's a wide spectrum of giving. Thanksgiving service. I want to emphasize just one. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. You give thanks. The Bible declares in 1 Thessalonians 5 18 in everything give thanks. My God. Give thanks. Thank God for your money. Your time. Your service in church. Your treasure. Give thanks. My God. This morning, we are going to give thanks in the next 10 minutes with ecstatic, clamorous, Davidic praise. We're not thanking God for things as wonderful as they are. We're thanking God for the breath of life. Aya, ya, 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 ya. Aya. Because the one thing he said we need to qualify is to have breath. The grave can praise him. Psalm 150 verse 6. Let everything that have breath praise the lord house of judah wake up rise up on your feet let's give. shall we thank you is our thanksgiving service it's not only a name we're deliberate to just celebrate him to yada him to tehillah him oh laka barakim zamahim can you lift your hand and bless him just bless him we're about to praise about to praise some of the praise is powerful raise. As we praise, there's coming a raise. Coming a raise. Coming a raise. Ask the Lord to clothe with the garment of thanksgiving and praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hit OJ. Take us deeper and higher as we praise our God for his majesty and his goodness in our lives. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Hey.
name we have prayed. We may take our seat for a moment. God bless. Thank you. Offering time. Offering time. Tighten time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I need to say a few things before we honor the Lord with our tithe and our offerings. And I believe we have had a recalibration. Our mind, our thought had been shifted by the word this morning. But the truth of the matter is, 
for us Christians, we have a very, very big, big challenge. And the challenge is this. The people from the other side see as for their God. Even when they have access to government fund, government fund is for their God. But for us, we begin to analyze and we begin to see reasons why this money is not for God, this money is not for God, this is how it should be. And I tell you the truth, in the Old Testament, the benchmark was a 10%. But in the New Testament, the spirit is generosity. It's liberality. It is cheerfulness. So in the light of that, what is 10% to your God? Why are you a steward? What is money? Mammon. Mammon. May God help us. May we be delivered. May God give us the grace to put that thing under our feet. We are released. We are delivered from the bondage of mammon. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Very quickly, um, there are two envelopes on our seat. One for our thanksgiving, the other for offering. Do yourself this good by honoring God with something in this service. For those of us who are worshiping online, the details are right there on the screen for us to give electronically. And for those of us who want to do the physical giving, we are provided with uh, envelope. I want us to stand very quickly for us to do our tightest dedication and prayer. Media quickly help us with that very quickly. Titus dedication. Can we please stand on our feet with faith in our heart? Very, very quickly, with faith in our heart. We are doing it together. One, two, go. Heavenly Father, in the name in the name of Jesus, thank you for being a covenant-keeping God. Your many promises to me are yes and amen. I confess and declare that you are my source and my provider. I present and dedicate myself to you today as a tither. And as you have commanded, I bring myself and my tithe to the house of the Lord. By this act of obedience, I declare my independence from the economy of the world system and my complete dependence and trust on you as my source and provide you, Jesus, my high priest, my Lord and King. Amen, amen. Package your offering, release your faith, pray over it. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, we thank you for the privilege of honoring you with our substance. We ask that the blessing of giving becomes ours in the mighty name of Jesus. Pass your offering to the nearest person, to the usher, as we receive Pastor Bimbo. That's all right. I'm the male version of Pastor. So it's not wrong. Have you been blessed today? Praise the Lord, somebody. Please hear me out very keenly and carefully. There are days and there are certain days. Hallelujah. Uh, certain stirrings were in my heart yesterday um, that got me to do something I'll keep till later. But suffice to say to you that this morning, um, the Lord sent to us an apostolic voice with an assignment. Um, I haven't seen her in Roger for a long time. She's been out of the country for many years, pandemic, and I am completely excited and surprised having her here. But she said to me that last night the Lord sent her specifically with an assignment. Now, let me tell you who she is. Um, she's one woman of God that God has used to speak into my life prophetically in very clear, unmistakable terms. I have a lot of honor and respect for her person and the ministry that she operates in. I want you with Jesus' joy to open your heart to know that this is the Lord. 
um, no conversation. I've not seen her for many, many months um, to bring the word that God has sent her to us as an apostle. But will you joyfully receive Apostle Pax Harry? Make her feel warmly welcome as she comes. If you're clapping, clap properly. Celebrate grace and open your heart. This is a Kairos moment that we will all be eager to partake of. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. For those who are sitting, I don't know why you're sitting. We honor and we honor. All right. Can we rise in honor to God with the praise and the glory? Thank you so much, Apostle Goodhart. You guys know that of an honor, this brother of mine. I really want to thank all of you, house of God, people of God. This is a, like Apostle said, this is a Kairos moment. I knew that I had to be here. I spoke to my very anointed baby sister um, and much more that she is to me. In fact, I dare call her even daughter self. She's everything to me. That I had to be here this morning. I want you to decree, oh, put your right hand to your chest. I'm on assignment. Right, you are. Every one of us here, we are on assignment. Just, let's just pray for yourself and say, God, you know, the man of God that spoke says it's a, it's a recalibration. And I agree. So it's a recalibration that we are now becoming people that are assignment minded. Can you pray that for yourself for one second? It's a recalibration. We're coming back to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I believe with all of my heart that God is in town. Hosanna. God is nearer to us than we ever believed. So, the Lord spoke to me that I had to be in Rojik. I haven't seen my brother. I haven't seen them for two and a half years, maybe. But in the spirit, I have been. I couldn't believe it when I came in. In fact, I had to ask uh, Paul Kumbo again, what's the theme of the message I couldn't believe what I was hearing because what I was hearing was where what I was doing last night you know with another apostle and the Lord said I'm calling this one into rest the rest of the Lord and the Lord said not even a drop of salt should this apostle pay for anymore and God was giving us opportunity Rakamusa Kataba to welcome so where I was on assignment last night to welcome the servant into the rest of the Lord the writer of Hebrews says there remains a rest so we go from glory to glory position to position disposition to disposition maturity to maturity we're not church people we are spirits we're God's people you're here as a spirit this is a fuel station you're here, what, what apostle is putting into you is gasoline to go and scatter out there with God's manifold wisdom. And the time has come, says the Lord, when the knowledge of his glory will cover the lands as the waters cover the seas. I want somebody here, remember recalibration, let your mind begin to be transformed that you are a vessel see yourself as the vessel in the house of that widow that the prophet came Jesus the spirit of Elijah Jesus the spirit of, of, of prophecy that testimony of Jesus has come and said what do you have in the house so you're the vessel and God wants to pour oil into you I don't know what our apostle was saying but God said to me in fact you cannot do ministry without money and what is ministry? The gift of God inside of you. What you've been learning in church. For it to become your reality and another person's reality. For it to be transferable, they ha you have to have money. A Solomon says, a poor man's wisdom is despised. I don't know if we can have Ecclesiastes 7 to Remember, I'm here on assignment. I'm here on assignment to birth you into the wealth realm. God has commissioned me to go from place to place to make believers know that wealth is now a mandate. So it says an instruction. Just as you have the kingdom mandate, 
dominion mandate. There is a wealth mandate that we don't have sermons about bringing money to do anything. That out of, you know, lively, we're lively stones, right? That we've been built, living stones, we have passion. You understand? We want to quickly find the thing and be going. You understand what I'm saying? And you don't go by what's in your bank account. you got to stop that. The, for a prophetic pool of asylum to come down here. That we receive Raka Musitiama, healing of our sight. Jesus came for recovery of sight. So we don't talk so much about money here. We, we, we move to wealth. Riches can finish. Wealth is transferable to generations. Are you hearing? God wants to give you what your children, children's children can have. But unless you learn the principle of emptying, you can't. So here's what is 712. God begins to give us this principle. And that I'm here on assignment, right? And one of the things God is saying, when you become assignment-minded and focused, you will have what it takes. Think about it. If you become military and militant, you're already thinking of weapons, isn't it so? If you're thinking assignment, you're automatically going to be thinking, how is it going to be funded? And the owner of the wealth, cattle on a thousand hills, his. Silver and gold, his. He says, I give you the power to make wealth, not riches. What is this? God is calling us to the realm of innovation and creation. But the foundation of our faith is given. Given. For God so loved the world. He gave his only. I'm not here to raise money. I'm here to agree with God to birth out gods out of logic. You understand? I said that the Lord told me that there are projects, initiatives that he's put in the apostles. This is being depicted in heaven as I was in the spirit, like an airport. All right? So, Ecclesiastes 7 to us says, Wisdom in the message translation is what I want you to go as your rhema. Wisdom is better when it is paired with money. Say wisdom. Remember, Solomon the wise says, wisdom is the principal thing. He says the principal thing is more potent when it is paired with money. Well, you know, we, 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 uh, pastor taught it all, apostle taught it all right? And there are moments when apostles are speaking, the word of the apostle is cutting through. The bondage is holding us back. We're being thrust. We need to understand the, the power of every one of this function. I am here on assignment. When I began to hear the message, I began to thank God for giving me the grace to be obedient to be here please tell your neighbor time and space is given for purpose another way of understanding it is that a moment has been created right now where like the cripple at the pool of Bethesda let me tell you God gave me these words I teach on wealth creation Apostle hasn't seen me the major work I do right now is teaching principles of God in the marketplace. And wealth creation is one of my courses. God sent me here. There are, there, there are people that are going to be birthed out here today that you have to write. Can I Copeland taught us, Daddy Kenneth, that you write the date on your Bible, okay? So by Deuteronomy 8.18, I want you to write today's date by your Bible. I don't want to break protocol of church. I wish I would have done this off camera. So we're in a decade of mysteries. Okay? Remember God told the disciples and he's telling you, disciples of Rojik, it is given to you to understand the mysteries of God's kingdom. Your apostle is not just a regular apostle. When I met him, God says, he is Nigeria. His life is the story of Nigeria. So 
So where the nation is going is where his life is going. So we can be hopeful that Nigeria is going into her wealthy places. Remember, I'm not talking about riches. I'm not talking about Naira. I'm talking about Naira that is built in the blood of Jesus that is bigger. I'm talking about 1,000 Naira that will get you. I don't, I don't even know where. Somebody is going to be birthed into something that they have never experienced. God sent me here not to raise an offering, but to open this to this well, right? A well that will never dry, never dry, never dry, never dry. And I call moments like this, John 4 moments, when Jesus had to pass through, he was compelled to pass through Samaria to break an 800 year old lie. It was 800 years old. Lie hanging in the atmosphere there that made the Samaritans operate on
understand every one of you get away from I'm a church person I'm here your kingdom in Rujik and as you receive the fuel of God's word is manifestation time no one is on my broke self right because they know that we have you know mysteries of the kingdom Ramasika Tamahandaya that we have to outwit the enemy, not the enemy outwit us. So begin to pray right now, because what I am speaking, they, we call it acquiescence. Somebody has to possess their possession. You see, the devil is a lie. This is a decade of the mind. All over the world, the, 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 the emphasis is on mental health. Mind, mind coach, this, that. Because the mind is the ecosystem of God, where everything God ever created is here, is being sorted out. I don't know if somebody is beginning to get glory is distinction your feet right Be, today daddy apostle angel of the has brought you into a place right where you have arrived thus apostle good heart is the destination of god is the promised land and your rest hebrews 4 the writer of the people said there remains a rest. And the Lord says from now you're not going to worry about worry. There are things you won't worry about. It will be a distraction to worry about things on this side of the earth. Worry about it to get money. Worry about food. Worry. You are being brought into something that there are things on this earth that your apostle never ceases to worry about. Remember the act of bringing the gifts all they had to the foot of the apostle was so that you know part of the principle was the apostles had to enter the realm where <laughs> you produce gods <laughs> this is where the ecclesia if you thought the church was down and out apostles karim are standing now to produce to birth out gods you understand i don't know who you are i'm giving you a few minutes agree with god i was in a meeting like this and Daddy Maurice Cerullo was Maurice Cerullo was speaking. Gora Masikata. I said, Oh God, help me. God gave me figure. He said, Write this check first of August. Write that one 31st of August. This was 1995. And what I was looking for needed nine months to manifest. Apostle in nine months it was there. Money. Is to serve us. It's a defense. It's a poor man's wisdom is despised. We are not going to be the tail again. You understand? We're not going to be complaining about Islamization, Fulanization, but we're just going to finance the kingdom of God coming. I don't think you're quiet. You're a well schooled people. Did you hear what I said? You are going to finance. You said that kingdom come. You're not going to hang out in Instagram, uh, Telegram, whatever gram, all of, you're going to in Ian's chapter 2, verse 7, you're, we're entering the realm of never heard, never seen. This is a church of purpose with purpose. I have been sent here to open a wealth realm, a wealth portal. So if you want to be part of it, I came on assignment. They'll tell you, they didn't know I was coming. I just called. And this morning... A young boy that lives with me, God told me, take him to church. And only for Chibuike, if you know the Chibuike, you know. For Chibuike to say, Ma, I want to follow you to church. Tell your neighbor, this is the day that God has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Okay, I'm going to follow the instruction of God.